me introduce us. For those of you who don't know us, we're the Vision Mission Committee, also known as the Council of <laughs> Elders. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we are about to honor one of our elders, Elizabeth Walker. And uh, you know, we've been talking a great deal about continuing education hmm. a bit of time ago. And um, for Elizabeth, the Alexander technique was continuous education. She never stopped. And that's what really distinguishes her, I think, from so many of the other of her generation. Is that, uh, I mean, every, every teacher in their own fashion, in their own way, is involved in their own continuous education. But Elizabeth, um, above all Elizabeth, set that as an example to us, I think. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, uh, I, I had, uh, <clears throat> Uh, for a number of years, uh, five women who were in their mid-90s working with me, and I would have to go to their houses and uh, apartments and work with them. And I'd often have, we, Julie and I would have them for dinner, and I was taking one home, to our home, from her apartment in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and uh, as I drove from my house to her apartment to pick her up, suddenly there was a huge snowstorm. And it was getting deep fast. And I said, I said, you know, I'm not certain you really want to, we want to go home. I may just want to take you back to your apartment rather than have dinner because if it keeps snowing like this, getting you back home is going to be an adventure. Uh -huh. She says, I like adventures. <laughs> <laughs> if I can trust the person I'm having the adventure with. <laughs> so, we had dinner and we got home, but that's Elizabeth. Her whole life was an adventure. Her whole life was an adventure. And she, I, I, I do think that of all her generation of teachers, that um, each had their own contribution, each had their, their own model that they stood for for us. But she really did have a model of um, eternal youth. And, uh, and constant understanding, uh, our constant desire for further understanding. She, I, I was giving a workshop in Oxford and Elizabeth took the workshop. I couldn't believe that she was out there taking the workshop. And, uh, but that's who she was. Th this is the woman that we're here to share our stories about and, um, and introduce her to those of you who did not know her. And the tea and the scones were also a little motif to honor Elizabeth. So you are partaking of her as we sit at this, uh, it's very religious now. <laughs> Red and wine. <laughs> I, I had met Elizabeth actually when I was teaching on her training course once. But I, I think what I call my friendship with her from our ATI meeting in Ireland, and I was watching her teach, and there was a moment where I was wondering something about what she was teaching, and I didn't say anything. And the workshop was over, and people left, and as soon as they all cleared out, Elizabeth raced over to me and said, what was it you saw you didn't like? <laughs> wow. And I told her. And this began a very lively friendship. <laughs> and, you know, there are lots of little stories in between that maybe when we're walking later I can tell. But that story came back. Um, the year, the spring after this Congress, I was in Oxford. And again, like Tommy, had the pleasure of finding Elizabeth she taking my your workshop. Right? She took my workshop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, also, I went to her house afterwards. and. And suddenly she's going, now Kathy, back there at that conference, why didn't you speak up? Oh, and uh, Lucia was a little <coughs> aghast. I said, she said, Mother, that was a long time ago. And I said, no, it's good. And she just looked at me and she said, Kathy. Oh, well, here you. <laughs> oh good timing. She said, Kathy, you must speak up. 
And it was really wonderful timing in many ways because I'd just been asked to do a speech and I wanted to say some things that I knew were going to be a little edgy for my crowd. And every time I get, well, is it, no? Elizabeth said, speak up. No. So she's with me a lot. Kathy, you must speak up. I have an ATI Elizabeth story. Okay. A couple of them, actually, but, um, you know, earlier someone mentioned that organization, that organization were spelled with a Z and an S. Well, when I was chair, we wanted to give her an honorary membership of ATI. And so naturally, you know, Elizabeth Walker, blah, blah, blah. And we spelled it with a Z. So she came up and said, Jamie. Now, my name is often spelled mis uh, incorrectly. Also, my name is J A M E E, two E's, no I. So we had this wonderful conversation about how important it is how incredibly important, how passionate it was. She said, that is not me. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth with a Z is not me. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth with an S. Z. Z, right. <laughs> Thank you, see? <laughs> I got some traveling to do. Um, but we had a lot of joy in that, and obviously there's no problem to uh, rewrite it. And I've heard recently that it's actually in her book, which I haven't <coughs> seen yet. But uh, she was very proud of that certificate. She was very proud to be an honorary member of ATI. And uh, we only hope we honored her as much as could be. Elizabeth with an S. With an S. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie with two E's. So that was fun. And as she, the first time I met her, I had welcomed the group to Ireland. and. Uh, Buzz was there also, so as soon as that little bit was over, Buzz and Elizabeth came right up to me to say hello, and um, I was just so moved by that. It was so welcoming, so friendly. And I would just add that that photo of the certificate was signed by Jamie as chair and Marsha. Marsha Pellin as executive secretary. That's and right. Marcia, so. yeah. Thank you. So I'm connecting to what Tommy said about continuous learning. The f one of my early memories go back to that Elizabeth in her 80s started learning how to use the computer and she was so excited about it. It was fantastic. I sent you an email. <laughs> <laughs> she just loved it. But the story I want to tell is about Ireland. We were there twice and you know it's two years in between. <coughs> and the first time we were in a room like that doing a little bit exchange and people were working and she was she was somewhere in the room and at the other end of the room somebody was taking photos with a little small camera and Elizabeth noticed it and looked and <coughs> went over and said is this a digital camera <laughs> excited about it <laughs> <laughs> that was this year you know two years later can you guess what happened? She came, had her, own. had her own little camera. Can I take a photo? I have to have a group photo. And we, I like that so very much because, I mean, that was years after her learning of the computer. She must have been around 90 or so. Mm -hmm. and can you imagine so many people with 90 saying, ah, oh, new technology, I won't learn it yet. <laughs> but she said, this is exciting. I want to know what it is. Mm -hmm. And this is about the way he was all, she was always <coughs> yeah. approaching new things. And I she was that. on Facebook. Oh, was she? <laughs> yes, I she didn't was. Know that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My experience with Elizabeth was at Martha's then house in Philadelphia on the third floor. And she had a horse, you know, one of the leather horses. And I was uh, picking up on uh, Kathy saying, you have to speak up, which is not my tendency. And so she said, would someone like to help me on the horse? And I thought, I'll do it. So I got up, and I thought she meant help her onto the horse. No, she meant give her a lesson on the horse, which I wasn't prepared for at all. <laughs> and so I put my shaky hands on her, and gave her a little bit of something, and she said, that was just lovely, dear. <laughs> <laughs> My first experience with Sweetbriar 
as a first year trainee, my homeroom teachers were John <coughs> Nichols and Elizabeth Walker. Mm. Talk about a mountaintop experience. Well, she came in with a sweet briar campus policeman's hat on. <laughs> it's about 10 minutes before class started, so we're saying, Elizabeth, where did she get the hat? Oh, it's a wonderful story. They were so delightful. And, and most of you know she was famous for going swimming <coughs> in whatever pond or body of water would be close by. And she loved to swim in the silk filled pond at uh, Sweetbriar. She <laughs> says, Well, I went in and I asked them if they would consider opening a boathouse in the morning because I think I'm disturbing the fishermen when I change in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I went on to say, Oh, I had this delightful time, so we went crazy. Uh, I said, pretend to handcuff Sudo. <laughs> the meal band looks just like a handcuff if you look at it closely. And she got into the roll, as you can see. I tried to get her to cross her arms, but, uh, and, but that's the Sweetbriar Campus Policeman's oh, hat. The class went to the dollar store and bought her a little policeman's kit, Billy Club, cap pistol, badge, <laughs> handcuffs. We thought we'd given her a million dollars. Uh, and she was, as we were giving it to her, oh, now I can't put this in my check luggage, so I'll have to pack this under such and such. So, but she was already planning how she's going to get home. So that's my Elizabeth Walker story. Thank you. <laughs> I also have a Sweetbriar story. Uh, it was the year after my first year of training, and I did not really know Elizabeth other than encountering her during uh, walkabouts in the morning. But she came to a class that I attended on Alexander Games. And the game that was being played was Mother May I. And Elizabeth was in her early 90s at the time. And she asked the leader if she could take two leaps. And she was at the back of the room. And no one ever said no to Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> so the leader said, well, yes, you may. And she took two leaps and crossed the entire room, which was the size of this, the width of this room, and won the game. <laughs> <laughs>
in, in next, next to our house. So she was here in the spring, and she noticed that there were some asparagus coming up. I had planted these asparagus, but I was new to, to gardening, and I really didn't know what you did with them, really. <laughs> so, so she came over, noticing the asparagus, and she said, well, when are you going to pick these? Well, I said, well, I don't know how. She said, come along, dear. And she, you know, we took a knife and we took a box top, actually, and, and we went and, and she showed me how you, how you pluck asparagus properly. <laughs> so that's my, my, first, my first story. It was so generous and she is so, was, was a great gardener. Mm. So my other very brief story that I, I often refer to is one day at Sweetbriar, we were down at the place where we would stay when we were teaching, and she came out of the little, the little room that had the tea in it, and, and she said, I'm feeling a little peaked. I just need a student. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my Elizabeth Walker story is from Sweetbriar as well. I was in my second year of teacher training, and we were in a gathering very similar to this, where um, Elizabeth was answering questions that people had about her experience with Alexander. And one of the participants said, you know, in my teaching, I've, I encounter a situation where there was this one particular student and I tried everything to get them out of the chair. And I was wondering if you have any tips for me about how to do that when you have difficulty with students. And she said, well, dear, just ask him to get out of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> when you are just graduating your school, you're a young teacher, you want to put your hands on everybody, but then you're maybe intimidated to put hands on senior people or, you know, and so you kind of pull back maybe. But Elizabeth and I were talking. We were probably just going through that spelling idea because this is the same hallway in Ireland. And it got a little crowded. People were coming in for lunch. So as we were coming around a corner, you know, naturally sometimes you put your hand behind someone as you're kind of guarding or don't want to, you want to block them from all the people. So I happened to put my hand right in at the base of her spine around her sacrum, just naturally not <coughs> thinking I was working with her at all. And she just kind of went, oh, thank you so much. That's just what I needed. <laughs> And, you know, like, who knew that uh, a young person could be so effective, right? And so naturally. So, and then we went on to just be so friendly. She was just so welcoming and warm all the time. And, uh, you know, it never occurred to me she needed someone to hold on to her. I thought we were both holding on to each other on the cliffs there. It was so windy. And just the sparkle in her eye, the welcoming, she just, just opened my heart all the time. I was in Lugano just after Elizabeth had published this book, the one that you have, and she was signing a copy for me. And of course, there were many photographs in it of um, she and her late husband in Scotland and <coughs> climbing mountains was one of the favorite things they had together. And so we were talking about Scotland, about all the, the places that she'd climbed. And she said, you know, I'm getting a little slow now and I really, I really have slowed down as far as climbing mountains are concerned. But I've just decided to take up snorkeling. So <laughs> this is a lady in her 90s who gave up mountain climbing and decided to snorkel. I had one, I just remembered. <clears throat> Elizabeth and I were having lunch in Ireland. And uh, we were talking for some time. And then she just stopped and she, she looked at me for a bit of time. And I was waiting and she said, you should always wear blue. <laughs> <laughs> I had on the blue shirt. And she, I said, what? She said, your eyes, wear blue. <laughs> I have another story and maybe some of you have heard that before. She was giving a workshop in Basel, and I went there early morning, going to Basel, and I had to turn in front of all of the others, which was in the, we were divided actually, two groups or so, so maybe 10 or so. And I was, it, it was not so 
It was short after I, I graduated. <laughs> and I stood there, and she worked her way around from top to bottom and back. And, and I felt, personally, I didn't say anything, but I felt like pizza dough <laughs> in the hands of the, one of these Italian guys. <laughs> she, she just changed everything. It was fantastic. So I didn't pay anything. I thought, that's weird. You can't think something like that. I, I thought that's like a compliment or whatever. But I, I can't tell her that. She's very experienced. I mean, 60 years of Alexander Technique. I can't tell her I feel like a pizza dough in the hands of an Italian pizza guy. So I didn't say anything. At the end of the workshop, everybody gathered, so the whole group, I don't know, 25, whatever, people, and we were sharing experiences and everything. I didn't say anything. Elizabeth came up and said, Gabriele, could you please say, no, I, I must have said something. Yeah, that's right. I must have said, I feel like that, because <laughs> she, at, at this get, end of the workshop, she said, could you please repeat what you said? before. Um, I liked it so very much. <laughs> so I, my memory is wrong. I have t told her that, but I felt so really, ah, oh, I can't tell her that because it doesn't, just doesn't work for all the play. But that was so funny because she liked it and she wanted to have it retold that mm -hmm. others know what happened. Mm -hmm. so I have to tell that again, the story, in the right order. When you told me that years ago, you, 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 you did tell her. I told her, didn't I? But then once you told her that, oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was something like that. <laughs> okay. Well, this is similar to Renee's experience in Oxford, except this took place seven years later in Lugano in 2011. And everyone was in the huge hall listening to some big, important muckety muck person speak, but I stopped and I saw Elizabeth sitting outside and I said, well, I'm going to skip the big muckety muck and sit outside with Elizabeth Walker. And we chatted for a while and there was a, a yoga mat because she was meant to be resting. Well, you know, she wanted, she'd rather chat. Then she said, do you know, I need to go upstairs to the bookstall and, and, and see what they're going to do about my book signing. And she had this lovely uh, Swiss walking stick. And so she stood and, sh and she said, may I take your arm? And I said, of course. And I just put out my arm. And I waited, because at this point, she was 96, 97. And I just waited. So she had her stick, her hand on my arm, and she took off like a shot. <laughs> we went up to the bookstall. She apologized for wanting to take the elevator rather than the stairs. Then we were coming back down. At this point, the, the session was letting out, and there were hundreds of people. And, and I, I was tall enough to see that I looked down, and I saw Sharon, Lucia's partner, looking at the empty yoga mat. <laughs> and, and so I kind of waved and I went, I've got her. And at, at that point, they made her leave the building so she would get her naps because they realized there was no way she would take a nap with all these people around. At the end of this, we're, we're going to take a walk outside. Some people are going to be swimming in honor of Elizabeth. <laughs> Some brave souls. I'm and gonna watch so you have an opportunity. <laughs> for an opportunity for more stories than uh, Fiona was able to attend Elizabeth's memorial and she has mm -hmm. some words for us about that as well as some pictures. We were corresponding back and forth right after Elizabeth died. And Fiona, bless her heart, she said, do you think uh, it would be a good thing for me to go to the funeral and represent ATI? And I went, my God, what a nice thing to do. <laughs> Came out of nowhere, this is why she went over with him. It was my great privilege to go to Elizabeth Walker's burial on behalf of you, ATI, the members, and for me. And this is an account of that day. And one of the brothers shared a Gaelic blessing at the graveside. 
May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields until we meet again. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. So that was very fitting. It's just very nice for us. I thought it would be fitting that it's Elizabeth's words that we move into the moment of silence with. So I <coughs> brought, it's really the end, the, the end of her book, far, Forward and Away. In my 90s now, I have moved to a flat, convenient but not beautiful. Sometimes it is sad to be just me. No husband, no children, and no dogs demanding walk or food. No river or sea to enjoy. But out of my window, I can see very small children in the playground below. Tinies daring to use the slide, then dashing to the seesaw wanting something different. With amusement, I notice the children full of life and well coordinated, while often the parents and carers sit on a bench looking bored. <laughs> While on the phone, I look out of another window, watching the birds, and on a small patch of water, a duck and a drake flirting. It's mating time, but a moorhen comes and disturbs all. This, this is her patch, and she drives them away. No longer am I able to admire the colorful drake. Watching time is over. I have pupils to teach preparing to give some lessons in the Alexander Technique, thinking of the needs and interests of each individual, and how I can help them to think and stop doing the things that are interfering with their balance and coordination. Teaching has been a most extraordinarily rewarding experience. Communication by touch is probably the most basic form of communication. And what is one communicating? The answer, very simply, is life. This sounds a rather grand claim, but every teacher will bear me out. The pupil becomes more alive, no matter whether he is stuck in a state of collapse or stuck in a condition of overtension. But whether the pupil is aware of this greater aliveness or not, the teacher is. And this is what is most rewarding because one knows with absolute certainty that what one is communicating is good. Mm. And our invitation for those of who, you who want to, to go outdoors and, and take a walk in celebration of Elizabeth, potentially enjoying the specter of those brave souls who are going in the lake, because Elizabeth would probably be swimming in this lake. <laughs> Elizabeth! This is water. <laughs> 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 
Oh, it's probably like ice. Plenty cold. Elizabeth! <laughs> Bravo! Thank you.